All right. So uh, we are back. Week two, post apocalypse month. Week two. Uh, we, week two. We are after the before. Right now, twenty five percent of the way. Right now. After you go on this journey with us, fifty percent of the way. 50%. That's math. Look, you can't argue with math. <laughs> It's not, we we didn't invent math. It's not that's not us. We didn't do that. It is a fool's errand to argue with math. Reserve seating starts right now. Yeah, it starts immediately. Can't argue with that. Can't argue with <laughs> Look, that. Reserve seating is coming for you, whether you like it or not. <laughs> Reserve seating doesn't give a fuck what time you're watching this. Reserve nope. seating doesn't care if you got work. Reserve seating doesn't care. We're here and we're ready to talk the Animatrix. Let me start with that because I want to say that um, I'm a big fan of the anthology that doesn't have like any type of wraparound. It's yeah. basically just like. Here's the and, and there's there's not there's not even at least on the Blu-ray I watch there's not even like a Warner Brothers logo at the beginning it's just like you're just in the code of the Matrix and it introduces Final Flight of the Osiris and you're right into the first segment Final Flight of the Osiris I don't think is one of the best segments of the movie yeah. but it sort of is really energetic at the beginning it's like a baseball game right there's like right. nine stories all together if you count one as a two-parter oh. um and it's like in the first inning it's like maybe you get a couple runners in scoring position that's final flight of the osiris but nobody scores but then like the second renaissance part one is like we put up like a six spot in the second inning and then like second renaissance part two is like we put up another two runs mm -hmm. and then the rest of the game is like not an offensive juggernaut it's just kind of like you're just towing the line you're keeping it even you're holding the lead you might get a run here you might get a run there but then like you get to the end of the game and like it was very front loaded so that's that's my point i went on, on a long journey to say that this movie's front loaded like baseball like baseball sometimes sometimes not all the time not all the time <laughs> So it's Reserve kind of like starts right now. <laughs> Reserve City starts right now. Do you remember when the Matrix came out? <laughs> and then no. remember yes. and then remember when we when we got the news that sequels were coming. Mm -hmm. and I remember downloading the trailer for The Matrix Reloaded as like a mm -hmm. quick time file off the internet and yeah. watching it every day after school like watching it like five six seven times in one sitting just watch it that's probably the trailer i've seen the most in my life because i would just sit and watch it over and over and over again and then there was this thing where it was like there's going to be animated matrix movies there's going to be a video game enter the matrix i remember that being a big deal as well and it was just so freaking cool. It was so cool that they were doing the Animatrix. I remember being really, really, really excited about this. The Final Flight of the Osiris, watching it this time, you know, a little bit, I, I think, I wonder if I would have liked it more if it had come first. How did you, do you feel like the order of it really did affect it for you? Like you said, like it was from. Yeah, yeah, because it's energetic and it feels like less meditative and yeah. Yeah. Uh, and kind of deliberate, I guess, um, than the other segments. And, you know, all the segments are like 10 minutes. So, but like a lot of them kind of have like a slow burn type of energy to them. And Final Flare of the Osiris is, you know, it's aping the animation style that was popularized by Final Fantasy, The Spirits Within. About that. And just kind of as like sort of a 2003 um, nostalgia piece, um, I enjoy it from that perspective. I think it's like, ridiculous in terms of like the section the the sexuality it's like the most new metal of all the segments it's very it's very evanescency and it's yeah. very like the yeah, the whole like beginning with the slashing off of the clothes and it was like photorealistic i just remember being a high school boy and being like this is, this is cool this is cool <laughs> yeah they're, naked. But, they're computers but they're naked kind of it's chintzy it's corny it's it's dated but it's i not. i, I kind of like it and i i enjoy it as 
for me the the kickoff of the of the NFL. Yeah, I watched it again. I watched it last, so it didn't quite have the same effect for me. But it was it is one of those things where it's like it wouldn't hold together as its own thing, but as part of an anthology, totally totally cool. So um, first for you, I guess, is the second Renaissance first part for one. For me, was the second Renaissance. You can definitely feel like the sort of anime influence, the Philip K. Dick kind of influence. I struggle a little bit with the Matrix, and we'll and we'll talk about this later, I'm sure. Um, I don't want the Matrix lore to make sense. I don't mm. want. I don't want them to bend over backwards to make it logical. But definitely, again, looking at it from the perspective of a high schooler who was, who was, who was watching it as somebody who was getting into the world of the Matrix and being really excited that the world of the Matrix was expanding, it was definitely something really, really cool to see. See, I, I think this is kind of the masterpiece of the of the anthology, the sure. the combination yeah. of Second Renaissance Part One and Part Two. When I'm watching Matrix or Reloaded or Revolutions, I'm never thinking about the events of the Animatrix. Um, it never, like, it, maybe that's just because this is only the second time I ever watched it. But, like, it, this feels like the Matrix Reloaded soundtrack, where it's like songs are inspired by what the artists take away from yeah. the movie The Matrix. So Which that's cool. what this movie feels like to me. And I think that the second Renaissance is... Um, kind of you know disturbing in a lot of ways for like obvious reasons i mean like i don't think it's like real deep but like if you it, it, you know if you're interacting with your siri and like you're you know cussing it out because it didn't do something or you're frustrated with it and stuff like that it's got that whole kind of like core really primal like what responsibility do we have to our technology not to like abuse it it nails on like an emotional primal undercurrent of some really heady sci-fi um so I, I really like this one. I think that um, I mentioned that I think the movie's front loaded. I think that like Final Flight of the Osiris being fun and Second Renaissance being so powerful for me, kind of like the, the rest is just icing on top of the cake. Like I don't really need anything else. Like, and the fact that some of the, uh, the later segments are hit and miss don't really affect my overall consensus feeling of the movie because the front is so strong. All right, so yeah, Kids Story um, for me was next. Um, it's the uh, anime version of the origin of the kid from Matrix Reloaded. Mm -hmm. um, in the movie Reloaded, he's very annoying. Um, in Revolutions, he's very annoying. Mm -hmm. In this one, it's got like one interesting idea, um, which is that depressed kids are some sort of like more aware of Making what speed. is going on between the two worlds than people who are what one thing i like that the animatrix played with and this is with world record as well is yeah. this idea that there are certain emotional states that you can be in in yeah. that will allow you to see the matrix more clearly yeah um, i think that's cool and especially as the matrix as an essential metaphor which at this point has been co-opted by the worst people in the world but like you know this idea of it being this sort of extrasensory perception this sort of thing that's like there is this thing that's going on around us that we're not always conscious of it doesn't really hold up as a story but it's it's yeah. it's cool as you said for that one idea well i think like just plot wise the issue is we've seen this before in the original matrix exactly. when when thomas anderson is getting um, kind of what the matrix is about yeah. yeah tied into it and that's more interesting i do like you know the metaphor in the sense that um you know i you as a depressed person feel like something's wrong with you but then you realize oh no everything else is wrong and you're not wrong so program was next mm -hmm. um this is i guess maybe a good place for me to say like i'm not a big anime person yeah um but I don't struggle with the Animatrix in the same way that I do with a lot of other anime. I think that it's maybe I just prefer the more action-oriented mm -hmm. version of it than oh, the meditative, like fantastic with, versions of it. I feel like with the Animatrix, the the a lot of the visual style is is anime influenced, but the storytelling is still very Western. Yeah, it you doesn't know, feel. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a that's a good assessments of it um like the program is like really slight it's yeah. just kind of 
uh, you know, just if you put a disc in, this is a demo. I and... think this is I think this is one of the stories where it's like we just really want to acknowledge our influences. We just really yeah. want to show like this animation style. We want to do something in this way because we want to make sure that everybody knows like we acknowledge that the, a lot of the action stylism of the Matrix comes from this type of animation. I have world record next. I think that came after program for me too. Okay. Um, I think of the later ones, this is probably my favorite. Yeah. Um, I just think that it's such an interesting idea that um, somebody with kind of like superhuman athletic ability can push through a barrier so hard that they see to another side. Yeah. Um, I, th I think that's really interesting. And it does a good job in a short amount of time of really getting you to care about a character and what's going on with their journey. This one, this one was really fun. I like the animation, this one too. I like the, yeah. I think this one, this one stood out to me too, because of the way it was drawn as well. Uh, and then um, there's, I forgot what the name of it is, but it's the one with the kids at the haunted house, basically. Yeah. With, like uh, the haunted beyond. neighborhood. With the cat? Beyond? Yeah. The yeah, with the, the cat. cat. Yeah. So the, the whole thing is like, this is a dramatization of the glitch in the Matrix exactly. thing in the first movie. Um, there's a glitch in an area that goes unchecked for a while. The kids think that it's like this haunted area or haunted house or supernatural area because they can do things like jump off of, you know, platforms and then like float in the air or like, like they just do things without gravity. Um, I think it's a really cool idea. Um, I think it's also kind of interesting how like stark it ends where it's just like, there's not like it's very abrupt and that's kind of how it would be in the matrix it's like once they recognize that there's this error it gets fixed and then you know the thing that i find interesting is unlike men in black where like everybody gets neuralized like everybody in the matrix still remembers yeah this which i never really thought would be the way that it would go cool stuff this one this one got a little bit irritating because it was so much of the girl calling for her cat um, which got yeah. kind of irritating after a while. But um, in terms of, again, dramatizing something that we all understood about The Matrix the first time, which is the black cat. Yeah, this is one where it felt more like how I react to anime normally, where it's very slow and like I have trouble not looking at my phone. I don't know. I just can't like get into the meditative state of it all. So like I prefer some of the earlier entries, like the ones with Second Renaissance Part 1 and 2, the guy who did those directed the animated sequences in Kill Bill Volume 1, and it has like a real forward momentum to it. So, yeah. But um, those there's some interesting ideas. And, totally yeah. cool. Yeah, totally. And again, doing, like you said, like this short form stuff where it's just like, we're not, we're not, we're not devising stories that have to hold the weight of an entire film or anything like that. Yeah. You know what I mean, because I do think the Matrix, especially with the sequels, like, they did stretch themselves a little thin thematically and, and, and in terms of their ability to dramatize these ideas that are so complex and that the, the first movie was so good at introducing to a wide audience um yeah. it gets a little out there but this was this was fine for what it was detective stories next my favorite thing about a detective story was some of the shots and just how cool the animation looked with it's like this kind of charcoal drawing and some scenes of it or some some parts of the background remain still and some parts are moving and it kind of has a Sin City yeah, it's a film vibe part. to it a couple years before that movie. Um, the story, I don't think, like, it's not well served by being as short as, as it is. Like, it felt like it was, we want to do this Sam Spade thing. We want to do this, you know, horrible detective thing. We yeah. It's animated. We, they bring in Trinity and it's kind of like, oh, that's kind of cool. Um, but again, more a stylistic exercise than anything else. Yeah, and this kind of leads into my take on the last segment called Matriculated. It was made by the people behind Eon Flux. Mm -hmm. uh, this whole movie, just kind of the way that it sort of flows in and out, um, it feels a lot like when you were watching, I think, I forgot what it was called. It was on MTV. Eon Flux was part of it. It was like this animation block. It was like liquid yeah. television or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. feels like you just like left this on and you're like half asleep. Mm -hmm. um, I think Matriculated has a lot of really interesting ideas to it. Um, the plot basically is like, what if we um, rehabilitate the evil sentinels 
right. um, and show them the the a lamp fell behind me. It's like they we're teaching them the better parts of humanity so that they're not hostile towards humans. And it takes on like some really kind of messy things. It's like man messing with science or messing with technology and like the adverse effects of it. Um, kind of I think it ends just... the movie sort of on kind of a whimper, but like, yeah, it's interesting. There are definitely pieces of all of these that I really like. And it was, I'm surprised they didn't do more of this. Like I'm surprised yeah. they were like Animatrix, you know, season two or whatever. Like I'm surprised they didn't keep going. The only thing I can think of is that the reception to the sequels, the sequels. was so lukewarm. The, the, the bloom that, was um, off the rose really fast with the Matrix. Yeah. I, I like what you said at the beginning where it's like, this kind of came out right around the peak of Matrix hysteria, sort yeah. of. And um, like the lead in, like the Matrix was kind of like this organic hit for Warner Brothers. It wasn't like all the merchandising and tie-ins. Mm -hmm. Like that didn't happen until in between the first and second movie. And then by the time the second movie came out, it got like the classic sequelitis, like let's have Powerade tie-ins with the agents and things like that. And I'm a sucker for all those things. Like it's the movie that had like, you know, like let's get Dave Matthews Band to do like a collaboration with Paul Oakenfold and stuff like that. I mean, like I'm just a sucker for all that stuff. Um, I think Animatrix is really good. I still stand by what I said last week, where I yeah, think it's my favorite of the sequels. Um, why do you? Why do you? What's your argument there? Why do you say that? I just think that it's the most interesting and kind of captures the same um, clean mood piece aspect as the first one does i think the second movie reloaded is a movie that i still love the action sequences from mm -hmm. but i don't have any patience really for the philosophy because i know it doesn't pay off that's the problem i think there are pieces of all three matrix sequels movies that i really like yeah the problem is that not one of them sticks the landing the way the first one does yeah and I think that it's okay to be ambitious and it's okay to stretch. And that, I think, that, honestly, I think this is my thing with the John Wick movies too, where it's like every one of them has things that I like, but there is something about following up one original that nails it so hard. Yeah. That part of the part of the joy of it, part of the miracle of it is that it does everything it does as well as it does. Everything yeah. else after that is kind of just like pretty good. Yeah, and then Revolutions, I, I'll i still always remember seeing Revolutions on opening night and the movie ends with like Sati and the Oracle and the Architect like sitting on a bench the looking bench. at the sun. And I was like, if, how did we start here and get here? Yeah. <laughs> like, it just felt so underwhelming and like the movie doesn't pay off any of the ideas from the second movie. It just kind of goes through like a uh, like a rushed action climax. Yeah, it's murky. It's not exciting. Like the action sequences are, they saved all the worst action sequences for the last movie. Yeah, that's um, true. And then Resurrections, I like. I, I'm sorry to say this because I know that it's very personal to the Wachowskis and like or Jelana Wachowski. And then I know that a lot of people, um, it it means a lot to those to a lot of people. I don't even consider it anymore like i i have a blind spot to it like i do crystal skull like i just right. when i'm like i'm gonna sit down and watch the matrix i think matrix reloaded revolutions and i'm good like resurrections feels like a term paper analyzing what we've already seen <laughs> so that is that is it for the animatrix um let us know in the comments what what uh your what your thoughts are on the movie what your favorite segments are we would love to hear that um, we will be back next week. Uh, JB is our guest. Um, we will be talking about The Last Man on Earth, yes. um, the Vincent Price version from the 1960s. Um, and we're really looking forward to that. Vincent Price rules. The Matrix, even though it's messy, kind of still rules. And I gotta, go, I gotta go check out what's going on with that lamp. Got that weird lamp situation you gotta sort out. There's a glitch, There's a glitch in the Matrix. In the Matrix. Lamps are falling down. Lamps are falling down.
I don't get Sandy Alcantara is giving up a lot of runs. Phillies are up. Uh, let's see here, fourteen to three, fifteen to three right now. Nikes. Bedlam at the bank, as Scott Branson said. <laughs> I'm gonna go drink a water ice. Talk about the fighting bills. <laughs> All right, everybody. Until so, next time. Oh, what do we do now? We both said at the same time. Let's both say these seats are reserved at the same time. One, two, three. These seats are. These seats are reserved. Oh my God. Oh my God.